Hey guys, it's Will, and today we're going to be talking about Dan Simmons' Hyperion. This is a science fantasy space opera novel that was published in 1989 and won a Hugo Award. And I have to say, it definitely deserved it. Hyperion is set in the far distant future of humanity, when mankind has spread its grasp throughout the a vast majority of the universe. But Hyperion is a planet that lies just on the edge of where mankind has colonized. Hyperion is a bizarre world with a very interesting ecosystem and culture, and is home to a strange religious site, the Time Tombs, which are a gathering of bizarre structures that move backwards in time and house the Shrike, a bizarre, violent pseudo-deity known as the Avatar, or the Lord of Pain. Now, the reason I bring up the landmark of the Time Tombs on the planet Hyperion is the novel follows the last pilgrimage to the Time Tombs, where throughout time the Shrike cult has sent pilgrimages of people, always in a prime number, to see the Shrike. Now usually all of the pilgrims are slaughtered by the Shrike, however, it's rumored that the Lord of Pain will grant one of the pilgrims a wish, but this hasn't really been seen in action. Now this isn't a story about a grand adventure to go and get a wish, it's more dark and political. Each one of the pilgrims doesn't really know why they're there, but they were chosen by the Shrike cult, although they might not belong. The story is told as a frame narrative, which means it's the overarching story is used to tell several smaller stories, which range in style from journal entries to a film noir type detective short story. I know this causes a lot of variety in the novel, which is really good, and the fact that it's so interesting and so varied, I really think anyone who enjoys sci-fi in general will find something they really like in the novel. I have to say I give this novel around a 9 out of 10. It starts strong, and I really enjoyed it thoroughly. However, towards the end, the individual stories being told through the major narrative becomes slightly less interesting, but the major narrative itself becomes more interesting, and it stays very well balanced. Now, this is also the first science fantasy novel on like an adult level that I've read, so it was a little overwhelming for me, but it's not super complicated. I just wasn't used to that scale of world building. Now, Hyperion is written and ends in a very standalone way, but it's actually followed by The Fall of Hyperion, which is the second book in the Hyperion Cantos. Now, The Fall of Hyperion, I'm only a little over halfway through it, but I have to say it's a very strong novel, and I'd have to say I like it more. It's not written in frame narrative, so the story itself is a little more together and flows better. Now I have to say, from what I've read, the Hyperion Cantos is probably one of my favorite series so far, and I really recommend it to anyone who enjoys science fiction. Hyperion was recommended to me by Hank Green of the Vlogbrothers. He made a video talking about it a really long time ago. Well, if I can find the video, because god, it has to have been released maybe three years ago or something, I'll link to it in the description, or maybe throw up an annotation. But I definitely have to agree with him. Mindfuck. So, Dan Simmons' Hyperion, published 1989, won a Hugo Award, will fuck your brain severely, absolutely go and read it. Thank you for watching.